In this tutorial, we will be discussing molecular compounds, formulas, and names. Molecules form several different compounds with the same nonmetal elements. For instance, carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide. They still both have carbon, they both have oxygen, but the ratios between the carbons and the oxygens are different. And many have common names, such as water is H2O and ammonia is NH3. And they are formed between two or more nonmetal atoms. The first element closer to the metal, so if we look at the periodic table, and we know that these are the semi-metals, over here we have the metals, and on the right hand side we have the non-metals. As the atoms get closer to the metal area, they're going to be named first, which means if they're lower on the periodic table or if they're on, more on the left of the periodic table, they'll be in the first one in the chemical formula. And we, deter and we dictate how many elements there are of each with the prefixes. Mono is one, di is two, so on and so forth. And this is just something you're going to have to memorize. However, once you get to penta, it becomes very familiar because of geometry. For instance, pentagon is a five-sided five shape, shape. Penta means five atoms. The first element, and this is the only exception, if it's only one, it has no prefix. For instance, we saw before carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. I said mon for the oxygen because it was the second element. I didn't say monocarbon for either of them because you don't say it if it's the first one. And the second one is the base word and it ends with ide. So that's very similar to the ionic formulas. So if it was chlorine, you take the base of it and you chop off the rest and it becomes chloride. So let's do some practice. Diphosphorus. So that means I have phosphorus, and because di is two, I have two phosphorus. Pent oxide. Oxygen. Penta is five. Boron two, chlorine four. So let's name this. Two is di, so is di boron. Four is tetra, right here. And chlorine becomes chloride. Carbon, there's only one carbon, and if the first one is singular, we don't use a prefix. The second element is oxide. Oxygen becomes oxide, because we take the base. There's two of them, so it's di. So carbon dioxide. Nitrogen, they don't write mononitrogen. It's just assumed that if there's no prefix, it's a one. Monoxide, there's one oxygen. Silicon, tetra, because there's four chlorines, chloride. And the last one, boron, Flor fluorine is fluoride. There's three of them, so that's tri. Acids fit into this scenario too because acids are molecular compounds as well. They're molecular compounds that specifically release hydrogen when dissolved in water. They contain hydrogen typically written first and they're one or more other nonmetals. If you have more than one hydrogen there, for instance, HC2H3O2, there's actually four hydrogens here total. 
it's the first one that they consider to be the one that dissociates, the one that comes off. It's aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. AQ is the abbreviation for aqueous, and it means hydrogen dissociates, which means the hydrogen comes off. The hydrogen comes off the compound. In general, acids taste sour. For instance, they're in lemons and limes. They dissolve metals, and, in, and there are many accessible items, such as lemons, limes, bathroom cleaners, so on and so forth. So when we're naming acids, there's binary acids, which is a hydrogen and a nonmetal anion, which means it's coming right off the periodic table. And then there's oxyacids, which is the hydrogen and a polyatomic anion. So we have the binary ones, which come off the periodic table, and the oxyacids, which are polyatomic ions. So let's take a closer look at those. If it's a polyatomic ion, there's a couple simple rules. If it ends in 8, that 8 turns to ick. You can remember that by ick. Ick, I ate an acid. It's a really silly phrase. But it could work if you if it helps you remember. Ick, I ate an acid. So ick turns it changes from eight to ick. So nitrate becomes nitric. Um if it was sulfate SO four it becomes sulfuric. This here is the rule if it's a binary. So they take a single atom, a single ion off the periodic table. They still take the base of it. They're just putting the ick at the end instead. So the ide becomes ick. Notice they put hydro in front to tell you that it's an acid. So if it comes right off the periodic table, it's hydro plus the base word, base element name, plus IC. It becomes us. So it's a nitrate, nitrite, it's now nitrous. Notice. All of these only have a minus one charge. That means you only need one hydrogen to balance it out. Sulfate up here that I gave you as another example would be H2SO4 because it has a negative two charge instead. So let's practice naming these. You have two elements. That means this is the naming for the right off the periodic table. So that becomes hydro plus the base word for sulfur, sulfur, which is sulfur, with ick. Now we have a polyatomic ion here because we have more than two elements. A quick way to check that is if you have more than two capital letters. That is perchlorate. You have eight here. Eight becomes ick, so it becomes perchloric acid. NO2 is nitrite, 
Once again, we have a polyatomic ion here because we have more than two capital letters. So nitrite becomes nitrous. Phosphoric acid. Now, you might get thrown off by this because we have the base root here. However, we do not have the word hydro in front. So we know that this is a polyatomic ion because there is no word hydro. Therefore, we know that it's PO4 because it came from, the ick comes from eight. So phos, phos, phosphate. Because we have a negative three charge, that means we need three hydrogens to balance out that charge. And the last one, hydrobromic. Notice it begins with hydro, that means it's the, just the element itself, bromine. Negative one, positive one, becomes HBr. And that's how to name molecular compounds and acids.